Um, uh, normally does, I'd like but to... this one's starting early. Of we got the, the um, plugged, I don't know 630 why. start time, and I'd like a motion to go into executive session for personnel matters. Does that mean I, I tune out? Yes, you can join us back at 7, Virginia. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. That's all right. No worries. Uh, I'm new to this. <laughs> I, I just want to hear, you know, I'm here for the damn damn. Yep. Okay. Thank I'll, you. I'll, 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 I'll head on out. And so that was a motion. Is there a second to go into executive session? Yeah, I'll I second that. Okay. Go ahead, Rose. Yep. Okay, so let's okay. take a vote. Cliff? Aye. I'm an aye. John? You're muted, John. I think he's frozen. He, yeah, he might be. <laughs> okay, so Rose, do you want to vote? Yes, aye. Okay, so that's oh, the motion included us. inviting Alfie into the executive session. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, you, Katie's here. Thank you, Katie. Um, all right, let's call the meeting to order. Is there public comment for items not on the agenda? If not, are there additions or changes to the agenda? All right, hearing none. Um, Sandra, uh, Cliff, can you call up Sandra's treasurer's report, please? Yeah, give me and a sec here. While he's calling it up, I can tell you that we are, for all intents and purposes, on track uh, with both expenses and uh, revenues. There are some line items that look um, as if they're over, but they're typically the COVID expenditures that are reimbursable. Most of them are, have already been reimbursed. And that is, uh, goes for highway and for general government. So um, I'm happy to take questions uh, about anything in particular, but we're really in good shape. Good. Yeah. So I just have I just have one housekeeping item just so we have it for the minutes for Katie. Who who is um who are the folks Dell users IP? I'm sorry. There's a box that has two uh, uh, a couple sitting in what looks like a beautifully oh. windowed room. And it says Dell users iPad. We just need for the minutes who who they are. But you have to take yourself off of mute so we can hear you. Okay, hi, hi. It's Laura and Patrick Purcell, P-U-R-C-E-L-L. -L. All right, thank you so much. Sorry, Thank Sandra. You. Sorry, Sandra, go ahead. That's okay. Uh, delinquent taxes are coming in. We started out um, the end of the tax collection effort uh, down $175,000. We are at um, $75,000 at this point in time. So taxes are coming in um, nicely. 2019 taxes are all but collected at this point. There is one parcel outstanding for $365. Uh, that person has contacted me. He does intend to pay that in full. So uh, we are really looking at, at collecting our, hopefully most of our 2020 taxes before the end of the fiscal year. Now we don't typically do that. We get to the end of the fiscal year and we might be at uh, $40,000 that still needs to be collected, but that also comes in generally in the next couple of months. So we're really on target on, on all fronts at this point in time. Sandra, that's really 
impressive. And I think when we were, you know, in the early stages of the pandemic, almost a year ago, we were, this is exact, we were concerned that this would not be the case. Um, I'm wondering, I'm just merely a matter of curiosity. Are you hearing from others around, other of, of your peers is just kind of the general experience around the state that maybe we're all hunkering down and not spending our other our money in other places. We, we actually are, it's easier to pay the taxes. I have not heard that everyone is really working on their t town meetings and elections at this point. And uh, I don't know when other folks are experiencing weird, Callis is, is in good shape. At, no matter what happens, I think we're good. My con my only caveat to that is of the 75,000 that is out, I have had yeah. very little- very, A married couple. Do your thing, you're in. Amazing. And you can swipe across. Why did it just- What's going on in you? Colleen, moot. Colleen, you should mute yourself. Anyway, um, I've had very little contact with the folks that are on the list. And this is about the time of year that the letters which are informative become more, let's say, persuasive to get that money in. Um, so I, I think we're going to be good. All right. Well, we'll look forward to future updates. Um, and let us know if you need any support. All right, will do. Any questions from anyone? Any, anyone on the board have questions? No. Nope. Anybody else? All right, excellent work, Sandra. Thank you. Thank all you. Right, thank you all. Have a good night. You too. All right, and we've already... Um, I don't see Toby, so I'm guessing that means he has no update and Alfred has no update as well. Hey, Peg, you want to share whatever you're drinking? <laughs> All right. So um, I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's, um, it's, it's red wine from the Maple Corner Community Store. <laughs> there you go. So um, Curtis Pond Homeowners Association, who's gonna be speaking on your behalf? I will. Um, Colleen, we didn't know if you were gonna be here, so I'm prepared to speak. So um, Colleen, if that's okay second? with you, I'll just go ahead. Let me interrupt for a second. Cliff, are we supposed to be recording this meeting? Or we don't do that anymore? Since Orca is recording it, uh, we don't have to record it ourselves. Okay, I just want to make sure that wasn't an error. Okay, sorry, yep. Heidi. Okay, no problem. So, hi folks. Um, I know most of you, but for folks who don't know me, I'm Heidi Thompson, and um, I'm a member of the Curtis Pond Dam Exploratory Group. And um, we are here, some of us from this group are here just to say hi and to introduce ourselves and to tell you a little bit of what we're up to. Um, we're kind of an offshoot of the Curtis Pond Association, which as many of you know, was formed about three years ago. Um, we're a group of about, about seven or so core members that have been meeting since the fall. Sometimes we've had more than seven. Um, and um, I want to, you know, first acknowledge that um, in the early 2000s, a lot of, you know, John and, and others did a lot of very, very hard work um, on the dam and exploring issues of ownership and how's it going to get paid for and, you know, dam studies. And there was the task force that was formed and, um, Kudos to you all. You all did an amazing amount of work. And we know things kind of fell apart related to um, ownership and how it was going to get paid for. But um, 
what we've been doing in about the seven meetings or so are just trying to educate ourselves about those issues. Um, we know that there is a lot of work to do. Um, it's a complicated issue with ownership and insurance. Um, again, how it's going to get paid for. Um, but we are just chatting together and um, asking questions, learning along the way. And um, we just wanted to make our presence known to you. We're not here to of any, we don't have a big ask, um, but we, we are pretty clear that the dam needs to be repaired. Um, as many of you know, there was a 2019 study that was done that said the dam in essence is not in great shape. Um, of course, the, there was that Du Bois study a number of years ago. And um, with climate change very much in our midst, um, another Irene um, would take the, the dam down and it would fail and as Again, many of you know, if it did fail, um, the state would not issue a permit for it to be repaired. Um, so, you know, the Curtis Pond Association has been focusing on lighter issues like beavers, although removing the beaver debris has been, not been, no pun intended, no, not a light, <laughs> heavy lifting there, but um, you know, lily pads, removing some lily pads, figuring out what to do about the lily pads and invasives. But we are just feeling more of an urgency to deal with the dam repair issue. Um, and want to move forward and, you know, want to ultimately work with you all. Um, and uh, so we will, we'll be coming again but I know Mark Mihaly has a few things to say. And again, thank you for having us here. Really appreciate it. Could, and could I just provide a point of clarification or two? Absolutely. Um, yeah, thank you guys. And thank you, Heidi, for putting all this together. I know you were instrumental in getting this thing going. Thank you. Um, just points of, a couple of points of clarification. Um, one, and I think you all know this, the engineering um, design and plan plans have been approved by the state. The 100% plans have been approved by the state, drawn up by Dubois and King. Um, yeah, Dubois and King. Um, with regard to the ownership, the town and its attorney, our legal research, we confirmed, we know who the owners are. It's the Father Gills. Um, and rather than debate it, and we are arrived at with Father Gill's attorney an arrangement where their concerns over admitting to ownership, even though the chain of title goes directly to them, um, it, we rendered that more or less moot because we reached an agreement and the state was part of this um, that we could apply the town, despite not being owners of the dam we could apply for the, the permits and secure the permits, which was um, required the state to change protocol. And we've done that. And upon construction of the dam and completion of the dam, um, once that is done the, and it receives that final engineer's uh, as-built certification and final set of plans rendered, approved by the state, then the town at that point in time would, has agreed to take, take ownership of the dam in the Vermont League of Cities and Towns insurance plan that we insured a town and town facilities and buildings under would then uh, cover, uh, uh, would it then uh, provide insurance coverage for liability um, going forward with the new dam. So we have that kind of all set up, it's ready to go. And really the only thing holding this thing up um, is the funding piece. Um, it was last estimated to be 400,000. I would bet you'd wanna add another 100 to that now because uh, cost of concrete is just skyrocketed. But that's all I wanted to put on 
on the table and let you folks understand that. Yeah, Sharon. Um, I just my question is only to see a show of hands of the folks who are here as part of the Curtis Pond Dam group. Okay. Yeah. I, Great. It, Mark, I, yeah, Mark, I was wondering like, is there a is there an ECCT thing? No. No, no, if this is happened. I just happened to have a camp on Curtis Pond and so got drawn into this. But okay, and the, it's all I think I'm pretty positive. Uh, you know, we're looking at each issue to see if we can find preliminary approaches that it'll be a win win for the people of Calus, for the town, the users of the pond, and the owners of land around it. I've met with state officials and public and private, we've met with public and private insurance folks and talked several times to Paul Gillies, who was uh, one of the attorneys involved. Uh, and we're looking at approaches on each of these issues. And I know, John, I'm gonna wanna talk to you more, but once we get a, be a better grounding, we, we wanna return to you and discuss next steps. The key issues are, yeah, the father gills own it, but they don't wanna own it. So the question is, what's the best way to resolve title in a way that title companies will live with. And the bet that involves the best entity to take title. I'm not sure it is the town. It might be the town, it might be a special district. And then I've talked to PASIF, uh, Frank Satink, uh, who's the deputy director of PASIF. And they would probably ensure, uh, ensure it either way, depending on who takes it. If it's in private ownership, insurance is very difficult, um, but then we're looking at possible approaches to dam renovation. What's changed is that Ben Green is now the chief dam safety engineer. And I think his attitude is very different than the prior guy. There are distinct possibilities that might be less expensive for approaches to the dam, but that remains to be seen. And then, then finally, of course, we're gonna have to revisit the financing approach in a way that works for everybody. Cause that's what we really wanna do is, is revisit this, we have an urgency. This time we're there, we wanna work with the town and we wanna avoid replaying exactly <laughs> how it worked the last time around. And um, so we, we've luckily Hannah Smith, who is the deputy general counsel of ANR, is an ex student of mine. And she met with us with Oliver Pearson, the lakes and ponds program manager at ANR and Ben Green, and they're very positive and very helpful, really helpful. I think there's a general sense that people really want to resolve this. They were positively, they, they want to, this has been around a long time. And so I'm optimistic that if we kind of are patient and do a lot of educating along the way and are kind of slow and careful, this time around, we can do something. And when we know a little more and have talked to a few more people, we'd like to come back to you and talk about next steps if that's okay with you. But right now we're just letting you know we're nosing around. It's, I'm glad that you're keeping us and we'll, keeping us and we'll keep us updated. Um, so we appreciate your work. Um, Rose did have her hand up a while ago. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that um, I became involved with the select board back in 2003. And from time to time, I search the minutes that I've been keep the keeper of select board minutes. So I have my computer open in front of me and I came upon select board minute search for the Curtis Pond Dam from 2003 to 2009. And it's a 16 page document <laughs> and it contains a lot of really good detail about what transpired. It talks about the engineering studies. It talks about recommendations. Um, it just talks about everything that's happened since 2003. And I would be more than happy to email this to you, Mark. Um, I don't think I have any other emails for anybody else um, in your group, but I know I have your email, Mark. Um, and I'll also email it to the other members of the select board. Um, but it just talks about the condition. It talks about financing. It just gives you a, a really good historical, what we've been talking about since 2003. That's excellent, Rose. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, yeah. John? 
Um, I know we're not going to get into the weeds tonight. And by the way, I hate that saying, why did I say it? Um, it's overused. <laughs> um, you want to talk about weeds, look at Curtis Cole. Yeah, we'll get into the uh, whatever. Um, the One of the of the $400,000 bill for rebuilding the or putting a, a dam ahead of the existing dam, the concrete dam, uh, a, a large portion of that cost, close to 25%, was the coffer dam, right? which was being required by, um, quite frankly, uh, Alan Quackenbush of the wetlands program, working with lakes and ponds. We tried to push for an allowance so that we wouldn't need the coffer dam for you know three weeks. We would do it in the summer um, when you know the the species are can migrate into safer places as the pond is dewatered. It's not an option in colder weather in the fall because they've all gotten gotten to the mud to hibernate and it can be found. It's it's less of a risk to the biota. Um, they can seek cover, um, and we. Try to have that dialogue. We were actually given the, the straight arm and actually Alan Quackenbush said, as long as I'm here, I'm not going to allow that. Well, he's no longer there. So that, that might be an option, Mark, uh, that, that has, would avail itself. And that would take, take a lot off the sticker price and it might be helpful. I think that would be helpful. Uh, we discussed that when I met with Ben Green and Oliver Pearson and Hannah and they acknowledge that what it is is the wetland folks want to go one way and the dam safety folks want to go another. And, you know, how that will, I think, but we can take, we can take another run at that. The, dam, the interesting thing is, um, well, just in a few words, a dam has to meet a thousand year storm. You don't, one way to do it is to raise the dam. Another way to do it is to armor the dam so that if there is a thousand year storm and it's overtopped, it can stand to being overtopped. And my understanding is that that approach was not really available to us the last time around, but I could be wrong, but it is available to us now. Ben Green is definitely, you know, open to that. But I think that's down the road a bit. I mean, I think uh dam design is one of the things that you know, we're all going to have to look into. And I think what happened, John, in 03, 04, we have to selectively use all the work we put in, but not be wedded to it if we've got a different cast of characters at the state. And the coffer dam is definitely something to revisit. You're right. Right. What uh, he's talking about, everybody, is that you got to, obviously, to build a dam, work on a dam, you can't do it if there's water up against it. So one way to do it is to build a dam behind the dam that's temporary and dry it out and then you can fix the dam. And another way is just to draw down the water temporarily. And that's the latter is much cheaper than the, I mean, hundreds, you know, six figures cheaper. If I remember right, last time the idea of drawing down the pond was not an option. Was that Alan Quackenbush, Joan? I'm trying to remember. Right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. um, yeah uh, that's what I remember. We did, and but we I, did I, explore. We did explore. Um, we first had hired. Uh, if you go way back in the archives, and I apologize, my connection's bad here tonight. Um, we did explore rebuilding the existing dam, um, and there was an engineer, Morris Root, who said he would he would. Uh, put his engineering stamp on plans to rebuild a laid up stone dam as, as they were built back in the 1820s or whatever. Um, he said they, they are actually safer than concrete dams and there's a whole presentation he did for us. I think uh, Barry Bernstein dug him up. The problem with his approach was not his approach actually. He just never came through for yeah, us. He's we the guy him, I, right? and who never, never came through. through. He lost you. Yeah, and minute. every time, uh, okay. yeah, it, he yeah. was, it got to a point where, I mean, he used every excuse, but the dog ate my homework. Uh, but his, his closest excuse to that was, well, my wife's school went to France on vacation 
and I wanted to help chaperone. Yeah. So, you know, so we got rid of them and that's when we hired Dubois and King and they're, they're straight up engineers, uh, concrete dams are all they do and all they're willing to put their engineering uh, licenses behind. So um, there may armoring may be it. I know that there was concern that the dam was, was uh, tilting. Um, although we had documentation that showed it hadn't really moved since 1973 when that was first noted, but the engineers at the state were still remained concerned and we couldn't get them off the dime on that. So if they're yeah. willing to accept that dam as, as it exists, as being somewhat structurally sound and it only needs to be armored up, that sounds great. You know, we'll have to see. Yeah. John, you, I think John, you and I were both on the dam task force, weren't we? Yeah, 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 and the spillway needs to be enlarged. Uh, that is, there's no debate about that, and that's not a hard thing to do. Um, but um, it would be great if there was an alternative to spending all that money. Um, but there, you know, one concern, and you know, this is where I struggled with the town paying the full amount of it. Was that is in a, in a, said this uh -oh, before, John. and maybe some of you. So the other folks, um, the the pond is in a mesotrophic state. And personally, I wish that if I if I could if we had the ability to sway the legislature and or the administration to to allow us as a test as a pilot project, allow us to drain Curtis Pond and pull out some of that material. That sediment is loaded with nutrient. And it's filled in the pond to the extent that we now get lily pads. It's both a nutrient issue and a shallow depth uh, issue. And so that's why we're seeing the conditions that we hadn't seen heretofore. Um, and they're only going to continue to progress. And I struggled with investing, quite frankly, all the taxpayers investing $400,000 in a pond that was literally on its way to becoming a, a wetland. Um, so... I would love to see that pond have its clock reset as it were um, so that the water quality would improve and we wouldn't see this movement toward its final end state, which it, it's moving fast toward. So that that's, I wanted to put that out there. Okay. Rose, did you have your hand up again? No? Oh, okay. Um, Nick. Hi, Nick. So we're just talking about, oh, I guess I gotta wait for this next one. So Nick, I don't know if you can hear me. We're just having the damn, damn discussion. Nick? He's got audio now. Oh, we were just having the damn, damn discussion, Nick. I guess he's having That's trouble too. Setting, yep. We're uh, in terms of our presentation. I mean, we're happy to continue answering questions, but we we just wanted, as Heidi said, we just wanted to make our presence known and tell you we're very interested this time around and and optimistic. Great, thank you very much, Peg. Uh, did, does anybody know how long it would take if they did let the pond drain out and? you know, what John was saying to get rid of sediment, some of the sediment, et cetera, <clears throat> which I would take from my garden, <laughs> some of it. Um, is, that, is there anything, any idea? Is that a whole? You could sell the sediment. Right. It could, it could be a fundraise. I always thought it could be a great fundraising mechanism. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that, I don't think that pond's ever seen industrial waste put into it. So it, it should be relatively clean. Nothing's clean in our environment anymore, but. We, we um, use what we take out um, right around my dock. We use it in our garden. It's, it's incredible compost. Hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it's full of nutrients. And that's what the problem is. So but, it would be great if we could get a pilot, if we could market it, Mark Mahaley, maybe he can work his magic and convince and them that this would was, be a great time. Sorry. I'm, I'm not great, I'm not, I'm newish to Zoom. My question was, um, 
Did anybody hear how long that would take to have the pond drained down? Would it be a whole summer's worth of loss of using the pond or? Yeah, you, you would lose. I know what happened up at Nichols Pond. They lost a summer, but they they had to drain that pond anyway because the dam was at risk of immediate failure and different than Curtis Pond, if that thing failed, it would have been a, caused massive, massive damage. Although Curtis Pond is a high risk dam as well. Most mm. of the concern, believe it or not, is not water flowing uh, past the breach, but mud. I, um, I imagine. Mud is considered part of the impound, impound uh, liquid. So wow. that's the concern. Okay, is there any the, is there any further discussion on the dam or any more questions comments? Thank you for making time on your agenda, guys. You're welcome. Really glad to hear it. glad to hear you're working on it. Thank you very much. Yeah, this Thank is you great, all. Thanks, guys. Bye. Take Thank care. You all. We'll be in yeah. touch. Take care. Bye bye. 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 Thanks. Bye. Okay. Very good. Well, that's good news. All righty. Somebody coming in or off? I can't tell. It's Nick coming okay. back, Denise. He, he, oh. wait, I think a lot of folks are struggling with internet. I know tonight is weird. It seems like maybe it's the snow. Nick, did you have something you wanted to add or Eileen? No, I, I just came to listen to the discussion. Thanks. Okay, great. You no, I'm, I, I'm just hanging said. out. That's all. And um, nothing better to do. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So um, just wanted to debrief a little bit on our meeting that we had on Saturday. Thanks to the magic wizard wizardry of our amazing technical person cliff emmons everything went off without a hitch kudos and claps and champagne to you cliff for making it all happen without missing a beat well we had a, a great team um, a lot of people helping out which made it a lot easier for me um and i think uh, the big saving grace was agreeing to perform it as in the webinar format because that really preserved a lot of bandwidth and the issues that we were seeing tonight with, with so many people on board uh, would have just been magnified considerably yeah. if we had tried to do it in the Zoom meeting format. Yeah. But uh, happy to serve. I'm, I'm glad we think, were able to accomplish it. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, it went off. It went off very smoothly. Everybody was prepared. Um, I think one of the counts when I was looking, I think at one time we had like 48 attendees. I mean, the number kept going, you know, up and down. But we had 12, I think it was 12 panelists. And then at one point we had 48 attendees. So for a meeting on a Saturday where there was really nothing to, to vote on and nothing could be changed, I didn't think that was too bad of a turnout. Yeah, and I can add that, um, for the benefit of everyone here, the uh, Zoom video um, did get published and it is now available on the website. Uh, Denise is gonna make an announcement on Front Porch Forum to let the community at large know that it's available for viewing. I am also looking into posting it <coughs> on YouTube, but there's a couple of extra steps before I can do that, but I will get it on YouTube and then we can uh, also announce that to the town because. Um, it'll probably play a little cleaner uh, once we post it to YouTube than it'll play off of the Zoom cloud account, which is where it resides right now. And I don't think, or I never, I sent Orca, I had several different emails for them and I sent them notices of the meeting, but I don't know that they were really there. I don't remember seeing them on as an attendee view. Yeah, I saw some of the postings you did regarding um, the meeting and the attendees, but uh, you had posted or a separate post about um, using the Gmail account, and I don't believe that one ever got published. No, I think what happened is I, I posted twice in one day, and sometimes they limit uh, you, and that's what I found out, that they post, because the larger post I did included that same message. 
so they didn't feel it was necessary to post the additional message. Okay. So well, they make those kind situation of... like that again. What we can do is pull in uh, Judy, and she can do one posting, and you can do the other. Yeah. So um, I don't know. Did any does anybody have any thoughts or comments on the informational hearing? I mean, it was our have, first first time. I have a I have a question. Um, I I did get feedback that it went impressively well, which I agree with. Um, it went really well, really, really well. Um, what was my question? Oh, the fact that everybody, um, Cliff, is it is it exclusive? Is it the web webinar format that accounts for why the attendees couldn't? They, I understand they couldn't why they couldn't see each other. And I actually appreciate the bandwidth explanation. Um, the fact that they couldn't either they could also not see. Uh, this is my hand over in the right hand column. Uh, the list of names of who else was there is all, is that also a function of the webinar format? That's correct. Okay. It wasn't that also a decision we made at the rehearsal. No, that's uh, something that's built into the Zoom webinar format. Attendees uh, can only see the number of people participating in the meeting. They can't see the names of the non-panelists. They can only see the names of the panelists. Okay, so the only way then, just so I'm understanding how this works, so the only way then would have been to, every time an attendee spoke, was to make them a panelist. Is that what I'm remembering? Um, yeah. Well... When, when the attendees spoke, their name would appear on the screen, much like you see Orca's name on the screen right now. Yeah. And then once the permission to speak is removed, they just go back into the attendees tab. Ah. But to be able to see their image um, and while they're speaking, you would have to make them a panelist. Gotcha. And as we were practicing in the dress rehearsal, we realized that created other problems and also really messed up the flow of things because there was an extra layer of delay while the attendee was bumped from the attendee list and brought into the panelist list. And then that was duplicated when you reverted them back to attendee status. Right, okay. So it made more seamless by allowing people to participate as attendees only. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you for the additional explanation. Katie? Katie. I'm curious if they could see each other when they were, there was a lot of messaging in the Q&A. So if someone posted a question or a response or liked it, could they see who was writing it? Or did it just yeah. say attendee? Mm. It, no, it would have their name who asked the question. Mm -hmm. And actually that brings up something else I'm wondering. Um, I could download a uh, file and put it into an Excel format of all the questions that were asked at the meeting because we answered them verbally. They won't have the answers to them, but we could create that list of questions um, and publish written responses to them for the benefit of the community if anyone thinks that might be of value. I don't remember whether we, maybe, and did we, did, did Gus um, like articulate the question? I don't remember. Yes. Yes. He okay. would read them out loud uh, because we thought that would be a good idea because we didn't know how many people might be attending by phone. They would not be able to see the questions on the screen. Right. right. So every single question that appeared in the box, Gus would read it aloud, say who asked it, and then someone would step forward to respond to it. So it's yeah. all there in the video. Yeah. I Well, I think that's good enough because... Yeah. If you just post the questions, then somebody's going to have a great idea of why don't you type all the answers out too, Cliff? <laughs> right. Well, that's why I was saying if, if we did that, then we would have to take the time to type out right. written answers. I mean, I think that you've you're, been you're already not volunteering to jump on that, Sharon. <laughs> I'll, I'm, I will volunteer for lots of worthwhile things. <laughs> um, I yeah, I don't, I don't think unless, unless we hear a huge outcry for something like that. I mean, I got I got good feedback. Um, people were amazed at how smoothly it went compared to just like a regular Zoom like we're doing tonight. So my thought is let's just publish it as video or whatever you're calling it. Okay, that's what we will do. 
And, John, are you, uh, John, are you, I want to know, is John still there or is he frozen there? He's in the state house. No, I'm still here. I got my video turned off because I'm having an okay. So. okay, I wasn't sure if you were really there or not. I, I also would point out that um, our webinar license uh, will expire. Uh, we only pur purchased it for a month, but um, it is an option to keep in our back pockets if we know there might be a large turnout at a particular meeting. We could opt at any point to purchase uh, another month's worth of webinar um, so that we could handle a larger meeting with uh, less hiccups like we're seeing tonight. What's What was the cost, Cliff? Yeah. Um, I have to go back and double check that. It wasn't horribly expensive. I want to say it was around $132 for a month. Oh, okay. Well, that's not bad. So if we ever needed it again, we could just purchase it for another one-time monthly charge. That's right. I, yeah. As I recall, it, you, it's probably a little bit more than $132 because as I recall, if you purchase a year's worth, it's $1,400. Okay. All right. Very good. Anything else on informational hearing? Anybody wants to comment, note, questions? I just want to say, I think it went great. You know, I, I think it, it couldn't have gone any better and, you know, kudos to Cliff, but everybody worked on it and, you yeah. know, yeah. It was it was a team. It yeah. was a true. It was a real team effort to make everything come yeah. together. So yay! Yeah. I'll yeah. just add that I found it reassuring that um, so there there could be an occasion in the future where we would need to have 140 people in a forum, and I just it was sort of like a maiden voyage. It made me feel like okay, we we pulled we pulled it off with 50. Um, that's promising for a future. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, updates. Is everybody done with this topic? It looks like I just Googled it. Um, if I'm looking at the right page on the Zoom uh, landing website, it's $140 a month for 500 attendees under for Zoom video webinar. Yeah, that's, that sounds right. All right. Um, John, do you have any update for us on, you want to give us some update on Central Mount Solid Waste Management District, all of the things that have happened with that? Um, well, you know, Bill Powell is our our primary rep there, so I don't attend the meetings unless he can. He cannot. And then, of course, we, as select board members, Denise and I interjected ourselves over the uh, glass dumping issue. Um <clears throat> So, as you all probably have read, that case was settled. Um, I actually, in my professional capacity, did a records request of the uh, Agency of Natural Resources because the settlement agreement did not uh, include admissions to the listed violations, which I saw back when I worked there, we, that was a, a, a necessary prerequisite to settlement. And... <clears throat> The primary reason is so people couldn't run around and say they did nothing wrong. And behold, I got my records request answered. And the reason they didn't require is because TJ Donovan changed the policy that had been in place for 25 years for no apparent reason. And um, I got a memo that explained why the, the process before they changed it was so good and why it was important and then they went and changed it anyway so very odd uh, I, I smell political pressure and so I attend legislative zoom meetings and I testify before legislative committee environmental committees I will be tomorrow too um, and uh, these Chitna and Sal Waste District official that actually directed the dumping testified last week that they did nothing wrong um, and, uh, the state got it all wrong and they paid the $400 to avoid greater risk of 
cost of litigation. So um, this is what the world we're in. And um, it's unfortunate, the dumping, the waste that was dumped was not required to be cleaned up and will not be cleaned up. There is, it's viewable by, through satellite imagery. That's how large it is. Um, and there it resides. So I don't know, I'm a little discouraged by it. Um, TJ Donovan's using it as a campaign issue. He's already campaigning. I think he's going to run for governor, uh, that he's this, this uh, intrepid enforcer of the law, and he's using this as his case, one of his cases in point. So uh, regarding the district, uh, they did all they could. I'm really impressed with our solid waste district. I'm really happy with how they responded on short notice with you know, a lot of information thrown at them. They did a great job. They wrote a nice letter. Um, they did all they could do. They, um, the select board, our select board and our district and other districts and towns weighed in and it actually resulted in a better settlement agreement than they were contemplating. Um, so as it could have been better, but you know, there was a $400,000 fine. I guess it got their attention. I hope it did. Um, and I do know that I had a conversation with a, legis a legislator. I'm not going to mention the name at this point. It doesn't make any sense to do that. But uh, they're trying to get a, an after the fact evaluation of what were the circumstances that made, put, that resulted in the Chittenden Solway District feeling they were so pressured that they had to dump this stuff and not inform the state that they were doing that. Um, and so, you know, that you have to, a debrief, you know, look at the situation on the ground and wonder, do we need to reevaluate existing state policy and reassess where we're at and, and where we're not going or where we should be going or where we intended to go and, and maybe did not reach that those objectives. And so I'm hoping that there'll be a, a review, a legislative review of the, the current state of affairs with regards to recycling and waste management in general and see if we can get state policy improved so we don't see a repeat of this. And we actually see uh, better systems put into play so that we uh, are more effective at kind of reaching those goals of reduction um, and reuse before we recycle. So that's, I guess, all I got to say. I talk a lot, I'm sorry, but that's where we're at. Not much to report from Central Vermont Solway's district, however. Thanks for being on top of that, John. Okay. Um, town hall, any, I think there's not much town hall update. Um, the election is being held um, for in-person at the town hall on March 2nd. The office staff have made arrangements for the town hall to be cleaned before the second is happening on the 25th. They're going to come in and do a thorough cleaning and use the um, whatever, I forget what the name of the stuff is, but it's a biodegradable um, safe spray. They're going to spray all of the, um, you know, the doorknobs and bathroom fixtures and things like that. And it's supposed to last the um i forget how long it is it's like three or four days or like something like that it's the same, it's, yeah it's the same it's the same chemical or the same non-chemical that they use at the co-op to spray down the shopping carts and the bathrooms and doorknobs and all those kinds of things so um andy felice is working to get the um shoveling done and Cliff, you found you got the hardware for Andy to install on that door. Yeah, we're going to get the uh, automatic uh, door closers installed so that we don't have the problem of the doors not closing all the way when people are coming and going as they drop off their ballots. And we need to uh, do a tickler to Alfie to remind him to make sure that the lot is cleared. Right, right. And yeah, make sure there's also out. been a request. Um, because of the angle at the exit of the parking lot that uh, he dropped some sand there. Right. Yep. 
So you have any friends update, Clark? Uh, no, friends uh, didn't have their um, meeting this month because we cleared the deck to allow me to work on prepping for the um, informational hearing. But uh, our next meeting is scheduled for uh, the 11th of March. And um, we are working towards uh, revising the management agreement so that we can present that to the board at a later date. Okay, great. great. And I, maybe you're sick of IT, but is there anything else on IT to update us on? Um, no, the only thing to be aware of there is that uh, we're coming up close to renewal time for our contract right. with uh, RB Tech, and we'll be making arrangements at a future select board meeting to have Ruben come in, uh, update the select board as to what they've done for us over the past year, where they see the holes coming up in the coming year, as well as an opportunity for us to, as well as the office staff to make them aware of any issues that we need them to address. And you'll remember that was, that was one of the things that we asked them to do on an annual basis when we spent time over a year, maybe two years ago, checking out other vendors to see, you know, if we were going to switch vendors. And one of the things that we talked to Ruben about was annually giving the select board an update. So we just need to schedule that to happen. The, re the contract comes up for renewal in early May. So we're going to want to do that sometime soon. And it's actually baked into the contract for them to do it. So they're the ones who proactively contacted us and said, okay, it's coming up. So we should get this on the schedule. Yep, so they did what we asked them to do. Nick? This is, what I hope is uh, getting close to wrapping up on the Elger grant with two um, IT pieces. One is we're still waiting on RB Tech to uh, come through with the two laptop computers. Um, and the other is the new website, which has been kind of moving along at a crawl. Uh, but Judy's been slugging away with with uh, off, Gov Office, they've um, just just this week completed the graphic design phase, and we did I was helping a little bit with that, and are now starting it on the content phase. So um, I'm only bringing it up because uh, the terms of the grant say that we this, we should have had this finished on December 30th, and I don't think anyone's going to come after us with you know with pepper spray and bullhorns, but um, on the other hand, we were hoping to get it wrapped up as soon as we can. Do you know when you might have um, something available to present to show the board where we're at with that? Yes, I um, I would I wouldn't I don't want to jump ahead of Judy on this, but um, we do have a link to show the the graphic uh, design and okay. but but not the content. So okay, well, maybe if, we can just do that at a future select board meeting and ask Judy. Yeah. Um, okay, great. That'll be nice when it's done. It's going to look fabulous, I'm sure. It does look good. Good. Um, Very with good. regards to the laptops, um, we have them now. The RAM, RAM chips that we needed finally came in, and it's just a matter of coordinating with everybody scheduled for a tech to get out and help the individuals get them up and running. Oh, great. Uh, we will also um, need to... Th this was not part of the Elger grant, but um, there are a few of the computers that we need to update with the current version of Adobe Acrobat. So we'll be arranging that as well. Great. Um, Denise, yes. I missed the first part of Nick's statement. I, he said we got, we're got we late on a, a finalizing uh, something required by some grant. I, what grant was that for? The oh. Elger. Go ahead, um, Nick. Yeah, it's it's the grant that that helped us purchase um, the updated website and uh, four laptop computers and a couple of uh, printer scanners and so on. Uh, and we were supposed to have everything operational by December thirtieth. But we when we were talking Thank about you. that, though, we thought that they wouldn't come after us with pitchforks if we didn't have it done, right? Right. 
All right, thank you. So that, um, was a grant, that was a grant we, we already received payment on, right? Correct. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm the guy who signed <laughs> saying I'll go to jail. If, <laughs> so we'll, we'll yeah. bake you a cake, Nick. Oh, okay. Yeah, Nick, I'm happy to drive you to the jail. <laughs> okay. Not taking a bus. Okay. Yeah, but you have to wear masks. All right. Are there any other updates? Um, I just want to uh, note that this is the last meeting of our session. Um, echoing all of the comments about twice a meeting, I send Rose a note in the chat and tell her I'm going to miss her. Say it out loud now. Um, Are you and that, make us cry. <laughs> and that, but that means that that next our next regular scheduled meeting after town meeting is a the beginning of a new a new year a new era time to hit reset and so um i we are having an organizational meeting on our first meeting and mm -hmm. i hope that we can dedicate the better part of our organization of the meeting to an or to organizing kind of taking that time to step back and pause and say, how are we going to work together over the next year? And um, what are our ground rules? What's our framework? And just, yeah, walk into the new year with absolutely no assumptions and, um, and, you know, revisit all of, all of the, I think we have a lot of assumptions and I hope we can revisit all of those assumptions and test them with each other and put a framework in place for how we work together and all of that good stuff that an organizational meeting for a board should be about. So looking forward to that. Okay. Um, we have some minutes to approve. Does anybody want to say, yeah, that looks, sounds great. Yeah. I, I, I want Aaron, to I wanna I, say it sounds great. I, I'd like to chime up and that I, Sharon sent us all a, a summary and mm -hmm. a lot of what's in there is what we've kind of over the years agreed to do but we've kind of been slow getting off the mark or we've been inconsistent in all of us in applying us those kind of agreed upon standards. So I think if we get the stuff in down in writing and we can, it, it's something to, to measure against. Also getting something in place for when, you know, me, well, I, I got another year and I'm out of here, but eventually all of us are out of here. Even young Katie, she's gonna <laughs> one, one day say, you know, I've been doing it for 45 years and I'm, I'm done. Um, so um, it'd be good that to, to have a, ni a nice organizational structure in place for the next, next board to, to pick up with. So I think yep. it's, it's, it's in the interest of the whole town to do that. So yep. Thanks, Sharon. sounds yeah. good. You're welcome. All right. I just, oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. I just want to say thank you too. And Thank you, Sharon. That's really sweet. Uh, I read what you had sent around and I thought it was very well thought out, very effective. Um, and I just hope that, you know, you can hit the reset button. Um, and I just want to say that this COVID thing has really been not good. And I just think we're all doing the best we can, but it certainly, in my view, um, is not efficient at all. So I, I would hope that everybody has their button on, you know, the moment that meetings in person can um, resume, even with still masks or sitting six feet apart. I think that there's something to be said for sitting in the same room. Um, so that's my hope. That's my hope that we get there pretty soon. The year think, is young. I think we're all hoping for that, Rose. Thank you. Yeah. Cliff, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot something under the IT update. Oh, okay, go ahead. Um, if you scroll to the bottom of the screen and click on reactions, you'll see you have some new tools. Yes, I thought they were very much, they were very fun. <laughs> so just want to make sure everyone is aware of them. There's a, a yes and a no button that we have now. We have signs for we all have the ability to raise our hand and we have um, oh, prompts for, that. hey, slow this talk down a little bit or we should speed it up a little bit. What is this? Okay. Oh, slow down. That's slow down. Speed, up. speed oh, up. How clever. How clever. All right. How much fun is that? 
Wait, yeah, this, does it slow down? I don't understand. Oh, yeah. it, just, it just it just it just asks the speaker to slow down. Oh, okay. I was afraid. How do you that, make it? Now, how do you make it go away? It'll click pop it away, or you can click on it again, and it'll go away. Oh, ah, there we go. How how much fun is that? Okay, talking about fun. About um, we're pretty much caught up with minutes. I think we have minutes from maybe the fifteenth. Um, first 17. one I see is from two eight. Two eight, okay. I see basically three sets of minutes. It looks like unless there's someone not showing up on my screen. And I went through them today. I didn't see any other inputs. I, you know what? I, I thought I, I know I reviewed those and I thought I made a comment at the top. But Katie gave me a little tutorial today. So, um, yes, I did review those and they seem fine. Yeah, I, I don't know where my comments went because I put a note at the top that I had reviewed them. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Is there uh, anybody that has any comments or changes to the minutes? Okay, does anybody want to? I, I wonder. Rose? Can I just can I just ask? Well, I'll ask my question after you guys approve. Rose, would you like to make a motion to approve the minutes? Sure, I'd be happy to do that. Make a motion to approve the minutes of February eighth. Yeah. Thank you. I'll I'll second that. All right, um, you want to vote? I'm a yes. Rose? Aye. Cliff? Aye. John? Yes. Sharon? Uh, I'm going to abstain. Okay, you wanted to make a comment? I just had a question. Oh, did, okay. Um, did anything come up? I didn't see it in the minutes, but I'm just curious about the trees committee. No, that didn't come up. I figured it would be in the minutes if it had, but yeah, no, I know that I know they're working on it, but it, they didn't bring it up. And 15th and 17th, I think, are combined, right, Katie? Yes. Yeah. And other than a few minor typos that I'm sure Katie would catch on a reread, I didn't have anything when I reviewed these. And again, I know I looked at those and thought that I found some typos and made a note at the top. But again, they're not there. I, but like I, I said, Katie gave me a tutorial today, so I can hopefully do a better job going forward. I see your I see comments here from you, Denise. On page, oh, um, there it is. Yeah. And I think that was that, that, that it. Did you have anything? It. Yeah, anybody else? Continuation. Yeah. Anybody else? No, it looks good to me. Is that a motion, we, Rose? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes from February 17th and February 15th and February 17th. Okay. Is there a second? Uh, I think John seconded. Oh, did he? Okay. All right. Are you ready to vote, Sharon? And I we have, okay, thank you. And I'm an I, Rose. Aye. Cliff? Aye. John? Aye. Okay, that takes care of that. Um, I would like to make a motion for the board to go into executive session to discuss a personnel matter. Uh, Denise, we do have the minutes of the informational hearing that we could approve if you want to. Oh, I don't, I haven't looked at those. Okay. I don't know and if anybody we'll, else did. We'll hold off on it. But I okay. do want to say great job, Katie. 
And yep. I'm amazed you caught everybody's name as well. <laughs> yeah, you do a fabulous job. Thanks, guys. Thank you. So we're going to, um, I'll make a motion. That's a motion to go into executive session to discuss a personnel matter. At 8.06. Right. Is there a second? I second. Okay, let's vote. Sharon? Aye. I'm an aye. Rose? Aye. Cliff? Aye. And John? Aye. All righty. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Orca. Thanks, everybody. Rose, I'll email you. Time. Yeah.